Senator, thanks so much for joining us and raising those important issues. Senator Sullivan is joining us. Senator Sullivan, welcome Thank aboard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Administrator. Welcome. Congratulations again on your uh, nomination and confirmation. I want to talk a little bit about this issue that's uh, been highlighted a lot by the uh, Biden administration on racial equity as it relates to environmental issues, job opportunities, and I, and I want to talk about um, the uh, very large um, population of Alaska Natives in my state who I think often get left out of this conversation on racial equity. Two areas, water and sewer, and um, broader economic opportunities. So as you and I discuss, you know, there's over 30 communities in Alaska, uh, and it shocks most Americans that don't have uh, water and sewer, don't have flush toilets, don't have running water. And, you know, when you get up to Alaska Administrator, you'll see these are some of the most patriotic communities in the country. Alaska Natives serve at higher rates in the U.S. military than any other ethnic group. Um, can you commit again to work with me? Uh, we've had a number of good bipartisan pieces of legislation through this committee to help disadvantaged communities um, that essentially don't have water and sewer. Most Americans assume every American has that. We don't. Thousands of my constituents. It's really outrageous, and I'd like very much your commitment. I think you're committed to that, but that's a, certainly, in my view, a racial equity issue. I'll tell you, uh, we are committed to it. I recognize that in Alaska there's about $1.2 billion to $1.5 billion worth of wastewater and water infrastructure needs. And, and you'll see that that's central to the 2022 budget request here at EPA is to provide those precious resources to those who need it the most. But you'll also see that request in the American Jobs Plan with that $111 billion request. Your state and so many states, we estimate $743 billion worth of water infrastructure and infrastructure needs. To your point more specifically, not only are we looking at those infrastructure investments, but we're looking at water affordability as well and water quality. So you have my commitment there Thank that I want you. to work with you. Let me go to another issue, and this is kind of broader economic opportunity, and this is where I hope I can get your commitment. I'm dubious, though. There's been nine executive orders uh, issued by President Biden targeting Alaska. Nine. I don't think there's any other state in the country, certainly not Delaware. As I've said in Senate floor speeches, if there were nine executive orders targeting the economy and jobs of Delaware, the chairman, Everybody else would be on the floor pounding their fists, but my state seems to get a lot of love from this administration. We don't like the love, right, because it's job killing. It's going after oil and gas um, jobs. Let me show you a chart here very quickly. I think I've showed this to you before, um, Administrator. This is from the American Medical Association, if you can see this. This was a study 20, uh, from 1980 to 2014. What places in America did life expectancy go up or down? In my state, it went up the most, the purple, the blue. That's up to 13 years. In 25 years, people lived longer. No policy indicator of success more important than the people you represent live longer. Thank you. Um, here's my concern. They lived longer in my state because they had jobs because they had resource development, because they're developing oil and gas. Do you think we still need oil and gas in America today? Well, there's no doubt that natural gas plays a critical role. And oil. And oil. Okay. Um, how about, and I appreciated your comments during your confirmation process, you didn't want to put anyone out of work. That wasn't your goal, correct? That's correct. So right now, unfortunately, we have uh, a lot of executive orders that are doing just that. Gina McCarthy, John Kerry are essentially saying we need to limit and unilaterally restrict production of American energy. Um, the mayor of the North Slope Borough, a Nupiat Alaska Native leader, in a op-ed last year in the Wall Street Journal entitled Goldman Sachs to Native Alaskans Drop Dead. I'd like to put this in the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. He mentioned that as uh, comp uh, investors are being told don't invest in Alaska energy sector. John Kerry's doing that, by the way. Um, that this is a concern uh, that these banks are, quote, demonstrating the condescending, subtly racist attitude that has been the hallmark of the way Westerners deal with indigenous people. 
unquote. That's from this article, saying, don't invest there without asking the native people there. The vast majority of the people I represent want economic opportunity in these places, including in the energy sector. I think this is an issue of racial equity that doesn't get mentioned very much. Uh, there's this project, the Willow Project, that we've talked about, 2,000 direct jobs at stake right now, the Biden administration is put on hold. Um, Administrator, can I get your commitment to continue to work with me not to kill these really important American jobs that have already been permanent, that in my state often impact um, Alaska Native communities overwhelmingly, and they're overwhelmingly supportive of them. I think it's putting racial equity on its head to target oil and gas jobs in communities that are primarily indigenous. What's your thinking on that? You know, my, my thinking is, and, and I think I'm, I'm proud that this administration has pledged to put uh, environmental justice and equity at the center of all we, we do. What I can is, it, what I can is it racial equity, environmental justice, to put Alaska Natives out of work just because they work in the energy sector? But what I can say there is I know that the president has put a pause on uh, these types of activities, and this actually falls in... Uh, interiors bellywick secretary hollands uh, so my, my pledge to you is to partner with you to be sure that everything that we do is racially sensitive equitable and culturally sensitive uh, and that's part of epa's dna and i can tell you that epa's attitude as it relates to oil and gas is focused on deploying uh, regulations that accentuate the technologies available to reduce methane it, it's not to target individual projects. It's not to kill projects. It's focused on the opportunity that we see with the application of, of technology uh, that we can use domestically and export internationally. So you have my word that we can work together to focus on that application of technology, do it in a cultural and racially and economically sensitive way, because that's what EPA's aim is for. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Corey, welcome. Thank you uh, for joining us today and for those questions. Uh, Senator. Um, 